Well, the Ducky 12SF is finally here. With this keyboard, Ducky has addressed probably the biggest stopping block in people curious about going to a 60%, and that's dedicated arrow keys. SF equals 65. Get it? For some of you, your prayers have been answered, and for others, you might be kicking yourself that you just finally shelled out for a one too many. So, we're gonna dig into this thing today and either make you feel slightly better or slightly worse about your recent decisions. You ready? Let's go. Today's video is brought to you by Capsmiths, purveyors of fine artisan keycaps that are 3D printed and hand painted right here in the US. Compatible with all MX style stems with some insanely detailed sculpted designs and even models of some of your favorite MX switches. No group buys or pre-sales, these are ready, in stock, and shipping within two to three days. And right now you can use code BADSEEDTECH to save 15% off your order. Click the link in the description to check them out at capsmiths.com. Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad C Tech, and today we're taking a look at the 12SF 65% mechanical gaming keyboard from Ducky. For transparency, Ducky did send this unit out for review, but as you should know by now, doesn't affect my review in any way. Included in the box, you get a dust cover, USB-C cable, keycap puller, a Year of the Pig space bar, and nine random color accent keys. This one's shipped with Living Coral, but I imagine there'll be a few different colors included at random. Retailing for $109 US for most flavors, the obvious and likely the most welcome addition to the 12SF are the dedicated arrow keys. You also get dedicated keys for delete, page up, and page down. If you've had a Ducky one too many and you've trained yourself to use the shortcuts from that board, they're all still here, even the arrows. The page up and page down keys also have alternate functions for home and end. Now you don't get something for nothing, so there are gonna be a couple trade-offs here. First off, if you're gonna add keys, you're gonna add size. The top and bottom dimensions here are the same, but the length of the board has been extended about 25 millimeters to allow for the additional keys. Outside of that, this is still the Ducky 1-2 that we're getting pretty used to seeing, so the same two-tone plastic case. There is some flex top and bottom. Sides are very sturdy, no flex and no creak. I'm very happy to see that they went with a matte white plastic lower here, as opposed to the gloss white we saw in the OG 1-2 Mini in the pure white edition. Unfortunately for me, there are a couple of opportunities with the case this time around. Now, ironically, my original Ducky 1-2 Mini had some issues with the case as well, and no one else's did, so maybe I just got a bad egg. There's a lot of center flex on this board. It doesn't really bother me at all in regular use, but what does bother me is that there's some balancing issues with the new delete key. It causes the lower left corner to jump, depending on how hard I hit it. This is less an issue on a totally hard surface, but on a thick desk mat like the ones from Novel Keys, it can get really bothersome. You also get the same four rubber bars on the bottom and the dual step flip down feet as well for multiple height adjustments. There are some revisions to the dip switches as well, not only in function, but in the actual design. They feel a lot sturdier this time around. Functionally, dip one is now gonna handle your windows lock. Dip 2 is going to toggle between 6 and in-key rollover. Dip 3 is for changing the vendor ID, it's some pretty advanced stuff. And Dip 4 is going to put you in and out of demo mode. That means if you need to reassign the location of your function key, that's going to be handled actually on the keyboard now in the firmware. So for instance, if you're used to having your function key on your caps lock key, you can still do that, but you're going to have to enter the new key switching mode. This is actually really cool. Not only does it allow you to make your caps lock key either the function or the left control, but it allows you to swap the position of any of the six modifier keys on the bottom row on the fly. And speaking of those modifier keys, this keyboard now has a non-standard right shift key and also has a non-standard bottom row. I don't own a 65% that has a standard size right shift, but the bottom row is often handled in different ways. The alt, for instance, simply loses the right control key altogether. So with the 12SF, they're going to shrink the right shift key to a 1.75U and they've shrunk the right alt and function keys to single unit keys. In terms of functionality, this really isn't an issue outside of getting used to a shorter right shift key, but where you might run into problems here is when you're shopping for alternate keycap sets. A standard 60% can fit practically every kit out there, but these specialty key sizes on the 65% knock a lot of the cheaper sets out of the running. If you go for like a big $150 and up GMK set, you're likely gonna be fine because usually those base kits will have different size modifiers to handle stuff like this. But most of the sets from like Taiha or even the Matrix keycaps that we looked at recently are gonna leave you with three keys that just aren't gonna fit. Ducky has announced they will be updating their sets going forward to take advantage of this new layout. I think the first set we're gonna see is gonna be the Tifu set, which I've got on the way right now. We're gonna be taking a look at that next week. Still the same great ducky backlit PBT keycaps here with alternate function side printed to avoid clutter on the top of the keys. Cherry MX switches here, brown in this case. These are soldered, so no hot swap. For most flavors, these will run you $109. You're gonna pay a $5 premium if you wanna go to MX Red Silent. And yeah, more people are starting to wake up to the idea of using different switches. I myself have developed a rather refined taste in switches as of late, but Cherry does enjoy a reputation for reliability and longevity.
As for RGB, still a white backplate here, now with the laser etch logo, still really solid saturation and color options. They have made a couple revisions to the PCB. You can now see their logo under the spacebar, and they've added additional LEDs under the spacebar to do a better job of lighting that bar. Looks really good. There still exists some confusion that without dedicated software, there's no way to do per key RGB. There definitely is. The manual does a pretty solid job of laying it all out, but if you need a hand or a visual reference, check out my review of the Pure White Edition. I walk you through it in pretty good detail there. But all that said, Ducky is currently developing a totally new software that's gonna be really feature rich, and the SF board is gonna be the first board to support that. And until then, you still have access to the Ducky Macro 2.0 system, which works off layers, has a lot of functionality, as well as some baked in games and everything else we've come to expect from the 1-2 series. All right, so let's talk value. When the original 1-2 Mini launched, you got small form factor, Cherry MX switches, full RGB, USB-C, backlit PBT keycaps, a keycap puller, a dust cover, and colored accent keys for $99. I think you'd have a hard time arguing that that's not a good value. So the 1-2 SF for only a $10 upcharge with the increased functionality, even with what I perceive to be a step backwards in the case quality, still represents a really strong value. In my mind, since the release of the 1-2 Mini, Ducky's pretty much held the throne for an affordable small form factor production board. That's a position rivaled only by the Ampro 2 and the GMMK Compact, but for me, it's always been Ducky, and I've been pretty vocal about that. The problem with sitting in that throne is that everybody's watching you close. The Mech Mini is right around the corner. That's finally going to bring a full aluminum case to the 1-2 series. That's going to address some of the issues I have with the case here. But competitors are slowly creeping up in what they're offering at that price point. I have a feeling that 99 to $120 tier is going to continue to get more and more competitive. I'm currently reviewing a Hades 68. It's a 65% board from Durgon that brings a lot to the table, and it's going to make for a very interesting conversation between these two boards. There's still a lot to love with the Ducky. It's awesome that we got some dedicated arrows. They just need to be cautious not to rest on their laurels. I do know that there's been some quality control issues with Key Chatter as well. I know they've made efforts to continue to release firmware to address that. I'm not really sure how much of an issue that continues to be, but I use some version of the one too many pretty much all the time and it hasn't plagued either of my copies and I've had no issues with this SF board over the past few days either. I think people are pretty stoked on this. At the time of this video, those first wave pre-orders are already gone. So pre-orders right now are stacking up for the end of September and I can tell you by the time that date gets here, those things are going to be long gone. So as always, if you want this, just pay your money and get in line. Also, a lot of you have been asking me for a review of the One Too Many Frozen Llama Edition. So here goes. I think it's a great look. I wish the keys were backlit. I wish the cable matched the colorway of the keyboard. I think it's pretty cool that they carried that over to the keycap puller and the backlit extra escape keys are pretty cool. There you go. Link in the description for mechanicalkeyboards.com and for candy keys. Any questions, hit me up in the comments or drop by the Discord. Also, people ask me in almost every keyboard video I do where they can get these keyboard stands that I use, so I'll link that down in the description as well. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, stay up.